Today we're going to be going over some expert level fragrances that I think every collector should own or at the very minimum at least try at some point. Oftentimes it's very easy to start off with some, you know, more basic, easy to wear, fresh scents and then kind of stay in that bubble. A lot of times it can be kind of fun and exciting to work your way out of that and try some other things that maybe you wouldn't have considered trying before. Some of these have been hyped up to the highest extreme and you've definitely heard of them and possibly tried them. Others of these are a little bit more low key and maybe you haven't thought to try them yet, but you should consider it. This first one is from a niche brand which really is, is not in the spotlight anymore. There was a point where this brand was at kind of the top of the game as far as niche men's fragrances go. I don't know how it was on the women's side of things, but you know they, they have come out with some very innovative scents over the years, but they're kind of, uh, I don't know, they're just not releasing things at a, a quick pace anymore. And it's really easy to lose relevance, especially now where brands, designer and niche, are putting out several releases per year. And from the house of Creed, it is Green Irish Tweed. So one of the many hype monsters from this brand, they have a lot of great ones, Aventus, Milseam Imperial, Virgin Island Water, Arolfa, Silver Mountain Water. But I mean, really, when you start naming them off, it's impressive how many hits that they have produced, although you just don't get much from them anymore. They've released a couple of Ventus flankers and limited editions to kind of tap into that a little bit more. But other than that, I mean, we haven't gotten a whole lot. But I got to give credit where credit's due. You know, they still have some amazing scents out there. And Green Irish Tweed is one that has definitely seen the spotlight. It's seen the hype, but uh, not nearly as much as it used to. And I think this is a phenomenal scent. If you're looking at getting started collecting niche fragrances and you know, you are a little bit cautious and you want something that is still gonna be safe, this would be a great option. You know, most people aren't going to be buying a green Irish tweed when they're first starting off collecting. So maybe as time goes on, you can work your way up to something like this. And I know people are gonna make the argument that yeah, you can buy Davidoff Cool Water for $20 and anybody could afford that. And so that means that everybody smells like green Irish tweed. I don't really think that's the case. I don't think Cool Water is as close to green Irish tweed as people say. That's just my opinion. It's to the point where I don't like Cool Water because it is so sharp and harsh. Maybe that's not how it used to be when it first came out, but my newer bottle is uh, unpleasant to even wear. And it's fresh, it was stored properly by me, it's authentic, I didn't buy a fake cool water, it just isn't all that good. So this is something you could dive into if you want something a little bit more professional and expensive smelling. There are many other options as well. Virgin Island water, like I mentioned, would be great. Arolfo would be something unique, but Green Irish Tweed is always a safe bet. Next up, we have Prada Luna Rosa Ocean. This stuff is great. This is the Eau de Parfum version, by the way. I almost left that out, and that's a very key point here. You have to get the EDP. For me, the Eau de Toilette of Ocean is not really worth picking up, at least now that we have this one. And it's not oceanic at all, and that's what's confusing about this. There's a lot of olibanum, some smokes, some resins in here. You are getting a freshness and aromatic touch, but nowhere near the level that you would expect given the name and the presentation. I think this stuff is phenomenal, especially given the fact that it's from a line that has since gone away from some more interesting and unique scents of the past. For example, something like even Lunarosa Black. Quite unique for what it's worth and is something that can be divisive, but that's kind of a good thing. That means you're doing something right as far as giving people something unique. Luna Rosa Extreme is a phenomenal discontinued scent that um, is just super unique and, and nothing else out there really like it. And now they've shifted focus and they're going towards these things that are just going to be a lot more focused on the general public. But Ocean Eau de Parfum is something that is at least a little bit interesting. Good performance out of this one. It's been on discounters for some time now, so you don't have to pay retail for it. It's still gonna be around $100, but that's better than nothing. And I think if you wanna stand out in terms of all of the other scents on the market, but you still want something that's designer level, something that is gonna be wearable and mass pleasing, this is a great option. Next up, we have Ferragamo Oud. This one, of course, it's gonna have some Oud, but also some rum, some leather, some tobacco. You're looking at around $60 for this one here on 
discount websites pretty much across the board around that price point. A little bit more expensive, in fact, about roughly double the cost of a lot of the other Ferragamos out there. You look at the Womos, like Womo, Womo Signature, F Black. Um, you know, those are typically around 30, maybe $35, maybe a bit less, maybe a bit more, but you'll find that this is a bit more expensive than per usual for this brand. But it does show through. It's not like this one is double the cost and, and has the same quality and delivery as those others. This is more of a premium product in my opinion. And that's not to say that the others are bad, but this one is kind of a cut above those. Not just in terms of the quality itself, which I do find to be very smooth and on par for a $60 scent, but just the, the actual scent profile, the development and everything about it. It is something that has more of a premium smell to it and also more of an acquired taste where the Womos and like Aqua Senziale line, those are gonna be a little bit more forgiving. This is gonna be a little bit more unique and perhaps a little bit more challenging. If you want something that is high end, great for work, great for more upscale dress up situations, check out Ferragamo Oud. From Bulgari, we have Wood Essence. So Bulgari Man Wood Essence. This line is expanding pretty quickly. I think, you know, at least for the past couple years in a row, they've been releasing new ones. Um, I think we got, what was it, Rain last year, Rain Essence. Um, I'm curious to see what they put out this year. I'm sure it's going to be something. And so, you know, with that, there's a lot of options to choose from. And Many options could have been in this video as well. You could have put Terra Essence in here and you know maybe a couple others, but Wood Essence is one that you just don't hear about a ton, but it is really good and it's gonna be overall a bit more unique and refreshing than something like Man in Black, which is by far the most popular. Lemon Zest, Cypress, some cedar wood in here and some citruses with sugar are making this one up. And so it really is, is kind of just written on the wall for this one wood essence, getting a lot of the woods, the cedar, the cypress, and then some citruses along with that to give it a bit of a fresh balance. This is actually a really good spring scent, which is coming up around the corner here and actually has been kind of feeling like spring here recently, you know, highs of 55, 60-ish and somewhat sunny. It's been great. That's the perfect time to wear something like this because you have that balance of a little bit sweet and woody, but also kind of bright and fresh. So at the peak of the day when it's warmest, you're getting some of that citrus to kind of come to life. But then when the sun goes down and it starts cooling off pretty quickly, you have that woodier, sweeter base to kind of help keep this one going. Spring is very much an up and down time of year for a lot of us and especially around here where the temperatures fluctuate vastly, you know, just from the morning to afternoon to evening. So something like this really offers a lot of versatility. And going back to what I was talking about earlier, you know, it's not going to be everybody's first choice when you're just starting out and you're going into a department store and smelling things. So if you're wanting to broaden your horizon a little bit, Wood Essence is a great place to start. Let's go with an elixir up next, Ralph's Club Elixir. And of course, following this new trend, there are a lot of elixirs already, and that's not slowing down at all. So that's just how it is, I suppose. But this is one that I really enjoy. And given the theme, it is expensive. I would recommend scooping this one up on discounters if at all possible. If it's not in stock right now and you can't get it, you can just wait. I don't really think it's necessary to rush out and buy this one at full retail right now. There are other options in this video. There are other options not in this video where you don't have to pay retail price. Just be patient on that. But if it does pop up, it's a good option. It's got iris, lavender, and some leather in here. You know, it doesn't necessarily look all that similar to the existing Ralph's Club scents, the EDP and the Parfum, but it does smell somewhat similar. So you're still getting the overwhelming aromatic focus. And then in this case, the leather, the iris, and a really pretty prominent peppery spicy kick as well coming into play to give this one just a bit of a different feeling more of a cool weather approach to this scent DNA. So right now into early mid spring would be a good time for this one. And of course, fall and winter. Uh, but it, it does have a lot more of a well put together, refined and mature smell compared to the others. 
and people kind of compare this DNA in general to the Y line, the Oda Parfum and things like that. There's definitely a little bit of a similarity, although as you get into this elixir, it gets further away from that. It's not the most exciting thing on earth. However, if you can get it at a discount, it is a very versatile scent that everybody around you is going to love that most people around you aren't going to be wearing. So it's kind of one of those interesting spots where you can really stand out a lot with this. Let's go for another one with a little hint of oud. It's Versace Pour Homme Oud Noir. So in a world where pretty much everybody knows about Versace Pour Homme and Dylan Blue, and even Eau Fresh has really made its rounds, um, Versace Oud Noir is not one that is going to extend to that many people in comparison. Not saying that nobody around you has worn this or smelled it because it's been out for a long time and chances are, you know, a lot of people have adapted this one as their signature scent perhaps, but it's still one that is going to stand out big time because a lot of people are still going to be off put by the oud here, even though it's a very designer level, easy to wear oud. It's as simple as if you walk into a department store and you smell a bunch of things side by side, Dylan Blue, Pour Homme, Sauvage, Blue de Chanel, any of those are always going to win for the most part over this when you're talking about a beginner. That's just how it works. And that's good for us because it makes it easier for us to stand out in a positive way. This is a great entry level oud scent for a pretty reasonable price. In general, oud fragrances are going to be a bit more expensive than non-oud scents. So pretty much every designer and niche brand has their oud version out there. It was a trend just like Iris and Ambrox, and typically that comes with a bit of higher price point. This is around, I think, $60 to $70 versus Dylan Blue, Pour Homme, around $40. So a little bit of a premium, nothing crazy. And as far as oud scents go, that's, you know, that's really reasonable. Let's jump over to another niche product here uh, from Amouage. This is Interlude Black Iris. So speaking of iris, I mean, perfect example fallen in our lap right here. Like I said, guys, every brand, designer and niche for the most part, will view these opportunities to get in on a trend, some sort of existing trend, and then they'll capitalize on it. And this is the perfect example right here. Uh, Iris is still kind of ongoing, but Amouage got this one out a few years ago and it, it wasn't really overdone yet. And so it, it worked out. It's got Olibana, Myrrh, Leather, Oud, Iris, smells phenomenal. And it still does maintain the interlude DNA, so that's something to keep in mind. If you're not a fan of that, you know, sample this one. Although I will say it's not as strong and brash as actual interlude itself or something like interlude 53 extrait which is even more next level due to the iris here and just how they reworked this one it's actually a pretty easy going interlude style scent that i think a lot of people would be surprised on how easy it is to wear this one comfortably and with confidence and not feel like you smell weird or too strong or anything most people out there aren't going to be touching something like this, giving you the opportunity to stand out big time. As far as discounter pricing goes, I don't remember. Um, I haven't looked this one up in a long time, but it is available on pretty much any of your favorite discounters, so make sure you check there first. And last up for this video, Terre d'Hermes O Intense Vetiver. You know, again, pretty much everybody has heard of the original, whether they're still utilizing it or not, I don't know. Maybe some people are for sure as a signature scent. A lot of people maybe have moved on. Regardless, you can go for O Intense Vetiver, which is a few notches down the line and isn't going to be anywhere near as popular as that original. And typically that's how it goes. Uh, a new scent will come out and then it'll get popular and everybody will start wearing it. But then over the years, they'll release a bunch of flankers. And typically, that person who isn't a collector will still be stuck on that original. You know, there's people still buying the original Aqua de Joe EDT 20 plus years later, using it as their signature scent. They might not even fully know or understand that there have been many flankers released since then, a lot of which are better. So, you know, that's kind of how it is with a lot of these brands, which gives you an easy opportunity to just wear something that's still familiar, but different enough to stand out. And that's what this one does. Just woody and dry, just like the original, but more of a focus on vetiver, bit soapy. It's a really good one. 
All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Some expert level fragrances that I think every guy should wear or try or buy at some point. I'll link these down below, and if you want to be notified of anything rare, discontinued, hard to find coming in stock, you know, Lana Weed Alone Blue Electric, Armani Code Absolute, and you know, the One Luminous Night, everything like that, jump on my mailing list and texting list at the link and number down below. And you'll get notified when anything interesting and exciting pops up, or a big sale or deals or anything. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.